What if Samsung's boldest chip ever doesn't make it into its own flagship? Yep, the Galaxy S26 series is on the edge of a silicon shakeup, and the decisions made now could change the future of Android as we know it. Welcome back viewers, Sam here. If you're all about juicy leaks, smart upgrades, and tech that keeps you guessing, go ahead and like this video, hit subscribe, and let's unpack this wild Samsung story together. So here's what's happening behind the scenes. Samsung has officially begun mass producing its next gen chip, the Exynos 2600, and it's being built on a cutting edge Sumnum node. That's not just marketing fluff. If this goes to plan, it'll be the first Sikadam smartphone chip ever, beating even Apple to the punch. But here's the twist, it may not even end up in the most premium model, the Galaxy S26 Ultra. Instead, the Ultra is expected to use Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite 2, and not the custom for Galaxy version, just the regular raw TSMC-powered beast. And honestly, that chip is no slouch. According to early leaks, it's breaking records on Geekbench. Over 11,000 multi-core and around 4,000 single-core. It's reportedly outperforming Apple's A19 Pro in multi-core scores. That's huge. Meanwhile, the Exynos 2600 is still in the oven. Its current production yield is around 40%, which means Samsung can only use four out of every 10 chips they manufacture. To launch a globally, they'll need that number closer to 70%. Otherwise, they'll have to fall back on Qualcomm. Again, sound familiar? It should. Last year's Exynos 2500 had similar struggles. It missed the S25 lineup entirely and ended up powering the Z Flip 7 instead, long after its original deadline. That chip was built on the Thernum SF3 node, but the new Exynos 2600 uses Samsung's FF2, which some insiders think is just a rebranded optimized SF3P. So, same problems, different name. Now here's where things get spicy, the Snapdragon 80 Elite 2 isn't just better in performance. It's loaded with an Adreno 8040 GPU and 16 MB graphics memory, which could mean major gains in gaming, power efficiency, and heat management. So the big question is, why even bother with Exynos? Well, it comes down to control and cost. Samsung reportedly spent 400 million extra relying solely on Qualcomm for the S25 series. They want to stop bleeding cash and regain chip independence. But the clock's ticking, and the decision on which chip powers the S26 series needs to be made by end of this year. So what will the phones actually look like? S26, it's expected to feature a 6.2-inch dynamic AMOLED display, M20H refresh rate, HDR, and Ceph, and Gorilla Glass Victus 3. Inside, we're looking at the Exynos 26 Omgenagon Eigen A Elite 2 20GB RAM to 520GB storage and a $4,000 dual battery with 2,100 feed to be to wireless charging. Classic Samsung polish. Maybe the S26 Edge will likely jump to a 6.7-inch screen, higher resolution, and a 4900 battery. Same chip options, faster 45W charging, and pretty much all the flagship features minus the Ultra Extras. Now let's talk about the Ultra. This one's shaping up to be a monster, a massive 6.9-inch dynamic AMOLED, possible under display selfie camera, and a quad-lens rear system with wide, ultra-wide telephoto and periscope sensors. Rumors say the battery might climb to 5400 mi, possibly even higher, but no big leaps in charging speed, still stuck between 45 5 pw Yeah, not exactly futuristic. And get this, Samsung might be experimenting with silicon carbon batteries and a mystery material called Susan to boost power density and heat resistance. Sounds sci-fi, right? But even if true, it's probably not coming this year. Camera bumps might slim down, though. Samsung's reportedly testing inkjet printed lenses to reduce module size, which could finally give us a sleeker ultra without that massive rear hump. Combine that with AI-powered enhancements and One UI 8 on Android 16, and we're looking at a mature, refined ultra, even if it's not revolutionary. But here's the final twist. No matter how good the Exynos 2600 is, it may still be skipped in the US, Canada, and China due to 5G modem compatibility, which means even if Samsung nails this chip, Qualcomm might still dominate globally. The fate of the S26 series and Exynos itself depends on the next few months. Can Samsung fix its chip yields in time? Will the Exynos 2600 shine or stumble? And most importantly, will fans even care if the performance gap continues to close? Drop your thoughts below. Would you buy an Exynos powered S26? Or are you sticking with Snapdragon all the way? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, sub, and share if you enjoyed this deep dive. I'll catch you in the next one.